Hello, everybody. This is Astrid, aka The Psychic Witch. If you remember me from the Spiritual Alchemy shows, then this is how I'm continuing to doing, doing that. If not, welcome. This is interview and podcast. And this time I have my friend, Abby, the psychic strategist, who I actually know from London. So hi, Abby. <laughs> hi. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm good. <laughs> Abby is doing tarot card readings. She's astrologist, but she has more really exciting stuff coming. So stay tuned because this is going to be really interesting. So me and Abby know each other for like six years. Uh, we get to know each other when I was in London and I was doing, uh, we've been doing tarot card readings there. And we had loads of fun uh, together in London, including doing uh, exorcism in, in the middle of Hyde Park in the middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have pictures from that actually. <laughs> ah, good old days. <laughs> so uh, today we are going to talk about something that it's very dear topic to both of us and that is developing of the psychic senses. Uh, why do we want to talk about it? Because Loads of people talk about it and it seems like loads of people are still having problems with it and they still seem to actually like coming into the same traps over and over again and they don't know how to get out of it and we have loads of experience with it so we were thinking hey you know, we might have some ideas. At the end we are going if you stick with us all the way till the end then we are going to tell you what we think and we agree on quite surprising number one reason why people are failing in psychic development and i'm almost 100 percent sure it's not what you think it is it's something different i really mean i really think you can't guess what we think is the number one reason um so yeah that will be at the end uh and we also at the end are going to pull some cards to actually see what the divine providence things um developing the psychic senses would be a good idea or how to do it but yeah let, let's let's jump almost straight into it so <laughs> Abby, what is your experience with psychic senses and their development? Like how this started for you? So how it started for me was basically zero, nothing. And I didn't even believe in anything. I was more, way more like a science approach because I was originally a doctor of chiropractic. So I'd gone through all of that kind of pathway. And then basically my Saturn return happened. And almost immediately, as soon as that happened, just it went mental and my psychic like i don't know senses or whatever just started to explode at the same time everything got taken away from me and that's obviously when i met you um and then additionally for that for me definitely too i then also met somebody that was a very like the exact same frequency as me and that for some reason ex like expanded my psychic senses even more this went into total chaos for me for like 20 months. It was mental. I don't ever want to go through that again because it's quite overwhelming. I think if your psychic senses come in really intense, really strong, really fast, that's just a bit like my whole thing was almost how to work with that and not let it freak me out or emotionally overwhelm me or whatever that might be. But then obviously over time, the savior was randomly I saw a shaman once because when all this happened I couldn't even get a job just everything got taken away um I went to see a shaman and they did that this uh, past life thing which was good but it was really to do with something else and then round about eight months later I got a call and I always remember it was like a Thursday evening and basically the shaman just called me up and said hey Abby um it's you know the shaman um you know you're probably gonna think this is really weird but something's just dropped out of my shamanic training course um, and my angels or guides or whatever said call, like contact you I know you can't afford it because I know everything's going crazy with your job but if you can start tomorrow then you're welcome to come and to be honest that for me was like a frigging savior because until that point I couldn't ground this stuff I couldn't work with this stuff it was totally overwhelming me in all honesty it was causing chaos in my life but then once I, I got entrained in the shaman type of way it just completely started to ground my energy solidify my energy it gave me guides it opened me up then in a way which was um nurturing and i would almost say more of a rite of passage through 
a mentor and that kind of thing. Whereas before it was just like an explosion into something. I didn't know what the hell was going off. So this is another reason why I truly believe that everybody is psychic because honestly, because I had nothing up to the age of like 28 and a half and then suddenly just super intense and it's just got stronger and stronger ever since. So I just believe we can all do this for sure. This is actually funny because I had exactly the same experience like you do. Like I always like, was quite sensitive to certain things but it was not like a full-blown psychic i was able to read the cards since i was seven and i was always like quite sensitive towards what the cards been saying so i would say my psychic senses like when it came to cards were always quite sensitive but apart from that it was kind of mild but wasn't full-blown like let's say for example as it is now and exactly when the saturn return came a period about a year and a half complete chaos and within that time my psychic senses just like got really intense really quickly and actually i know quite a few people who are telling me the same thing like they just went into some sort of spiritual awakening or something situation and it take about a year or two and within that time they changed as a person their life changed completely and yeah. because your life life changed changed too i've noticed that if you're seriously developing your psychic senses, if like yeah. really, it's not just like, oh, I can have a little better intuition and I little, <laughs> just a little bit better. But when it actually, if you go in it, your life changes too. And also yeah. yourself, yourself. yourself. Everything is changing. Everything is changing. And the psychic senses are opening and there's a chaos everywhere and you're starting to see, see stuff and, and like realizing stuff and you're not sure if you are insane if you're going insane if you're already insane <laughs> and I then my were amazing i cannot believe because some of the stuff i was coming out with and i was coming out with it really emotionally really intensely i think it's amazing that they didn't get me to go and see a doctor and maybe like a psychiatrist and that sort of thing but obviously they didn't which is amazing for me um, to be fair, I wouldn't have gone anyway, because I knew that I was not going mad. I just knew that this was overwhelming and I didn't know what to do about it. But I totally knew I wasn't mad. Do you know what I mean? It's also, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the shaman, because when I was awaking my um, uh, like abilities around the same time we met, because we are almost the same age, um, yeah. then actually I also got a shaman. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this was a different one. And he also was like helping me with it. Because I think when actually this process starts you are obviously lots of things are changing so people might have tendency to doubt it like oh my god i'm just this is just coincidence but there usually are some sort of like a randomly coming people in your life totally. like 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 this person just appears in your life and just have the exact puzzle piece that you need and they give yeah. you the puzzle piece and in many cases they just disappear and you never see them ever again and if you look at those situations and like actually look at it, it's like that was pretty bizarre that this happened. So if if you like, I'm losing my I might be losing my mind, but this is pretty bizarre. I can still tell. So that's usually like because like that's usually a good sign that you are really going through a spiritual development and spiritual awakening when the psychic senses are coming with it as well. Because yeah. like I've never had so many weird coincidences, and I'm not talking about one one eleven eleven. I'm not talking just about that. I'm talking about like completely random people coming in my life, and I was on the street and just like sitting and smoking and coming to me and telling me some random stuff, which was exactly the stuff I needed to hear, and then disappearing, and I never saw them ever again in my life. So that's the type of bizarre, like a prime 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 a prime premium bizarre that actually <laughs> is is happening within, within that process but actually i'm not sure if this was your experience as well but mine was that after roughly a year and a half the process had like an end and then things settled down for me it kind of calmed down i would say quite a bit like at least like still chaos around me but i was much calmer it was like this calmness within me that just kind of stayed ever since <laughs> my hesitation says that probably it took me a bit longer <laughs> all i just know is without that shaman thing i was absolutely the words is fucked because i already was and i still think it definitely took me some time because 
Because I haven't even been interested in tarot. I mean, when I say zero up to 28, I mean, I didn't even consider it. I didn't even think about it. It's just not even part of anything. So I think the thing was, I was a bit like, I mean, I didn't really, it just took me longer than I think it took you. But um, actually, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I wanted to ask you because loads of people think that you kind of have to have it in your family, that it helps oh. to have it in your family. Do you have it in your family? Nope. However, interestingly, what I would say is this, since I went through this like mental thing and all of my family are witnessing it, my brother then started to become like psychic and then my cousin started to become that way. And then the thing is, it's hard though, because now I feel like my mum can be really intuitive because it's just, I don't know if it's because my lens has shifted and because I truly believe we are all psychic, I therefore get insight. And, and I, sometimes I know that my spirit guides are speaking through people, you know, just because that's another way it can work. So it's so then hard to kind of like, you know, I basically, I think it's <laughs> bollocks that you have to have somebody in your family or you have to come from a lineage that's got it. Um, I'm not saying that that might not also give you some kind of potency within that field, because for sure it could. But all I know is like, I didn't have anything and it came in super strong. So once again, I feel like, you know, this can be, if you really want to be psychic, you can absolutely do this because I had no interest in it <laughs> and it still happened. And I had no family members, no nothing. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, yes, like sure. And How about you? Me? Yeah. Actually, yeah, it's actually tied to something out uh, for the question I just wanted to have, actually ask you right now. And that was, for me, it started with me having this strong wish and this very strong intent that I need to change in my life. Like, I can't do my life as it is. My life is horrendous. Yeah. It was mostly tied to it's my absolutely, like, hideous, terrible <laughs> relationship I was in by the time. But um, that was like, I was like sitting down, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. This is terrible. Like, I, I can't. Like, I feel, I got this feeling that I have so much power within me, but it's somehow like locked and I just can't do my life anymore and I need to do something with all of this. And then this intent just triggered everything. And then, then just all the, all the bizarre coincidences started to happen. And then just one, one craziness after another. Um, and just everything just went up in the air and then it kind of settled down in, in the way pretty much as it is right now. So I wanted to ask you, like, did you, like, before this whole thing, did you send, like, some intent? Was there some sort of, like, a wish for change or something at the beginning of this? I don't know if it was a wish for change, but what happened was I was at a chiropractic clinic and she got me to go to this and I have actually, it's quite funny because I heard Donald Trump speak at this event because it was like years ago. <laughs> this thing called something like the National Achievers Congress or something, I don't know. Anyway, these chiropractors that I was with, they were very- Because you saw the light after hearing Donald Trump's speech. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's a very bizarre type of a teacher. I thought my <laughs> My drug dealer, the dealer from Camden, is a is a is a weird spiritual teacher who came with the right puzzle piece. But with Donald Trump's speech, I think you totally outdid me. <laughs> weird, because they really were like basically they used to. We had no choice; we had to go. Because I was like, oh fuck this! I don't want to go to that. Because I wasn't really into this idea of like, I don't know. I just like to just. I wasn't into what I thought was a bit like. I'm not sure. I wasn't worried about the things like success and stuff like that. I was just like, look, I'm just chill. I'm fine. Anyway, so I had to go. And to be fair, Tony Robbins was there as well. And I did really, I, I really enjoyed it. But this is the funny thing. Somebody went on, it was a guy called Greg Secker and said things about trading. So still, this is nothing to do with spirituality. But like the lifestyle that he said you could have, I was like, yes. Hell yes, I totally want that. I want total freedom. I want to be able to do what I want. I want to have money so I don't even have to think about it. And I don't want to spend a lot of time working for that money. And the truth is, that's what started it for me. So I don't know how that quite goes into psychic, but my life always does curveballs and wild cards. So I suppose, yeah, that was just the thing because then I started to read books like Think and Grow Rich. So it was all stuff that said you could create your own reality. And I was just, I totally bought into that. That felt like my soul was like, yes, that's what you're here to do. Do it, do it. 
So then, I, then it was sort of came off that, I think, as well. And then, like I say, Saturn return was hitting in. And just one other thing I did want to mention, because I do feel like this happened for quite a few people as well. You know, the end of 2012, when that Mayan calendar thing was supposed to shift? Mm. This also coincided with my Saturn return. And plenty of times my guides have said to me, the thing is, genuinely, the energy shifted at the end of 2012. And it opened up way more stuff. Which is why now, like, psychic things, astrology, self-growth is so, so huge. Just because it's all part of this new way of developing and growing and expanding. So I think I also came in almost like on a wave with that. So that might have been similar to you, because obviously Saturn return, and then literally that, all super close together. Um, and then obviously Donald Trump. <laughs> he's, very, he's, very, he's very solar. Like, that's like the ultimate quintessential, because he's a narcissist, but that's quintessential solar energy. And solar energy is just, it, it can burn, it can manifest, but it yeah. always attracts people, because it's, it's yeah, solar. Okay. Solar is always somehow, so even when people hating, loving, doesn't matter, it does attract. So it, that's like the solar charge. So in a way, that's kind of like a little bit, a little bit of a sense that it's about triggering something. Um, <laughs> actually, you're right. I, I was, if you think about it, everything changed out of 20, uh, 2012. Like not that much changed between 2000 and 2012. At least I don't think that much. But then like 2012 to now, it's like a phones and technology and everything yeah. makeup gurus uh, uh gaming channels like youtube facebook instagram all yeah. of that all of that happened is since pretty much 2012 like yeah. life and the way how we live life the all uber eats and all of this uber uber eats for oh, the, yeah uh so many stuff like the way how we were lots of more and more weird people like myself are working from home from the internet um Me too. Yeah. yeah so uh, we don't have having employers like having i think like um uh, not being part of somebody else's huge huge establishment do you know what i mean yeah. i think there's a lot more freestylers basically yeah that's how it's I, re I, I really like it because I think in a way the internet gives actually to pop the power back to the individual. It makes yeah. pop power back to people. You don't need some a huge travel agency to get you to Egypt for a holiday. Now you can just go on one website, book your hotel, go on another website, book a cheap flight ticket. And I, I actually like it. I think it's good that the power is getting, uh, you know, towards, towards people. I'm, I'm all, all, all about that and I totally support it. And also, by the end of this year, we have this huge, huge astrology thing where it goes away from a 200-year cycle to do with, like, Earth energy being majorly in control, and it swips into air energy. And, you know, this is a really cool fact. The one year when the astrology kind of slipped, so it went from the air sign into the air sign, was the year that the internet got birthed. So just oh, in one cool. year... Wait until yeah, we have, obviously, the air, that's the internet world. technologies, mercury mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, actually, I definitely think like I think you can easily observe it, even like with a naked eye, um, that we are entering such an airy age because now everything is starting to be really sorted out on that internet, rational, uh, mental, airy level. Uh, again, people food shop for internet, people order food from yeah. internet, Uber, uh, people work on internet. Like technically speaking. I don't even have to touch my money and I don't have to even go out of my home to make money, to withdraw money, uh, to get myself a food shopping and to get a food and to order pretty much anything I need. Like I don't even have to pretty much leave my chair. Uh, I'm, quite, I'm quite anti-social, so I'm, absol I'm absolutely happy with <laughs> I know, uh, Despite my look, I'm not actually quite a party person. I, I like, this is my party. This is my party. This is my, this is my dance floor. Uh, nice. You know I love a dance floor. <laughs> yeah, we should, we, should, we should go. We should go. <laughs> Next time I'm in London. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so definitely loads of shifts are happening and loads of people um, are, I think, coming closer, thanks to that airy internet as well, towards uh, psychic abilities. More, they seem more and more people are interested in it. More and more yeah. people are starting to get uh, awakened. And what I was uh, like starting to developing them as well. And I've noticed like if I take it 20 years back, rather like remember, 
there was like something like that too, but it was not nowhere near the scale as I'm experiencing things now. I, yeah. when I remember that somebody who would actually go on that spiritual journey, it was like, it was slightly different type of people. Now more normal people are even coming to this. People yeah, like, yeah. like mothers from a families, a housewives, you know, accountants. It's not, it's not like this, any like a village witch characters. No, everybody is now really opening up their senses and they're nice. coming, going through that development like you and me have been talking about. I actually yeah. heard quite a few people talking about a very similar experience that the life just went into shambles everything turned into chaos and they just like awakened their, 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 their intuition. Yeah. So that, that's actually, that's actually really interesting, but we also need to talk about, okay, so it's psyche development from how we made it sound so far. Uh, sounds like something absolutely amazing, but obviously <laughs> nothing <laughs> in your life comes without the price tag. So totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so obviously there are some like there are some blockages that people might encounter. There are some problems. Like I think for me, the 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 problem during the process was because it kind of forces you to see you in a different light, yeah. and it, you see yourself in much more, I would say, objective light, and yeah. you sometimes see things about yourself which is like, oh, ow, <laughs> ow, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so w how it was for you um i just felt like all my pain and suffering came up like after i felt really good to begin with because i was like doing all this oh wow i can create my life etc and then that was amazing and then i created some things which i just couldn't believe but then also and I have this thing that I've experienced anyway, which is quite often it's easy in the beginning to create things that you really want, but you don't necessarily hold and maintain them if you're not a true, like coherent vibrational match for that thing. Because sometimes it's quite easy to like hype up your energy to generate something. But yeah. if you want it to be sustainable and long term, you have to actually fully embody that vibration. And I would say that's where then my shit started to come up. <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's kind of how I found it. That's 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 absolutely that's absolutely true. I do have a very similar experience. Like sometimes, like certain thing I would like hold, but then they like just literally went through my fingers. Yeah. Um, but as I think, as I was developing, and as the time progressed, I noticed that less and less stuff is actually, for me at least, like less and less stuff is actually slipping through my fingers. I'm able to retain yeah. more. Um, yeah. So I think that that is definitely something that um, I can be trained. Um, oh, yeah, for sure, definitely. Another thing I'm also noticing, not necessarily with you and me, uh, but I think some people uh, I've noticed have, because they might, they might not be having good guidance or might just the way how they are, they seem to have only really one-sided development. Like yeah. they sometimes don't want to, because... It's a show because when those uh, things are developing, it always brings somehow magically the pain always comes with it. And it's yeah. just really bring out all of that nasty stuff. Uh, and I think loads of people react to it by one-sided development by like, okay, let's shut, sh let's shut the nasty yeah. thing down. Let's not look at it. And yeah. let's just look in that love and light and unicorns and rainbows and pretend that the, the, the 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 crane behind my back that's screaming and kicking and yelling does not exist because yes. I will make it not existing. Yeah, yeah. And I've noticed that, I, 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 yeah, that doesn't lead to good things. No, and also like the way that my guides always showed me this was: let's say you're an energy field. The thing is, when you you can start activating things in your energy field, like positive and love and light and everything, which draws stuff in. But equally, if you've got some shadow stuff going off, it will start to sometimes like deflect or like refract or, or sorry, bring stuff in. But then it will hit like a shadow part within you, and it will either get decoyed in some way or like shoot straight back out again. If that kind of makes sense. So the thing yeah, is, yeah. if you were looking at those shadow things, you can't ever increase your psychic abilities and resources. As, as like pimping as they could be. Yeah, the shadow is part of it. The shadow is a part of the process. 
yeah Yin and yang is working together for the change like it, just one half of that machine does not work or it does not work and it doesn't produce really good results so i think like definitely like not being afraid of that shadow it's oh yeah definitely it's it's I it, think you have to embrace it and i'll be honest with you and i know this is say partly my sort of vibe i like some of the grimy parts of me as well like i know some parts like i'm like no that's a real fucking problem and i've got to sort that out but other parts i actually realize in the right situation and the right setup they're actually an ace at my sleeve in the same way that some of my say my <laughs> love and light aspects in certain situations can actually be like a bit of a problem do you see what i mean so i even think within the shadow and the light there's still this amazing like fluid like dance within it so you just got to just use the right thing to the beat of the music of life and that, that will vary sometimes shadow sometimes light sometimes mix them up and i think it's having that kind of ability to essentially not be too fixed because i think a lot of psychic energy comes with, within the space of emotional energy in terms of how it moves and flows. I, even, or even, I'd probably say even more expensive than emotional energy, but in order to really start accessing with it, I do think you have to start to really be fluid and flowing. Otherwise, you might be getting psychic imprints, which you just don't pick up because you're not even open or flexible to that kind of information or insight, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, totally. No, no, it's perfect. Actually, that, um, that leads me to another thing I wanted to talk about, and that is obviously in this type of a situation, uh, you are kind of in the middle of it. So sometimes it's hard to keep objective perspective. And we've been yeah. talking about it because you've been talking, well, there's a technique for it. Uh, I think you call it for like totems or like a spirit guide. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, this is quite cool because... Um, just purely because of now I've done this, used, you know, done lots of different stuff. My spirit guides are super chatty to me, which I know that everybody could have if they wanted anyway. It's not something that's unique to a few people, like we all have it. I was in some one thing and actually this uh, spirit guide came in and told me something was going to happen. I was really pissed off about this because also your spirit guides, you can be, you can get pissed off with them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They're just normal. So anyway, I was like, I thought this is really irresponsible of you telling me this. Why are you telling me this, et cetera, et cetera. And then basically what came out within this discussion was, um, they showed me this thing. They said, look, this is what you call an energy totem. Everybody's is different, but yours is a white pearl. So anytime you're not sure if you're getting insight that's not correct from a spirit guide or it doesn't have your best interest in heart or it's just something randomly coming in into your reality that you don't know if it's good for you, ask it to show you your energy totem. And if that consciousness can send you an image of your energy totem, you know you can trust it. They did also say this like, a, so mine would be a white pearl, but there is also like a, a bit of a flick with this or switch. Whatever your totem ends up being, it should be a specific color. If something shows you your energy totem, but it's a different color, you can still trust it. It just means that you're not fully open to hear the message properly, which I thought was really funny. Just That's because awesome. This is such like an awesome technique because I know that especially throughout the process when you're still working or developing your um, your uh, psychic abilities, uh, then it's really hard to tell. Because at the, at the beginning when you don't have like a, I would say one of the prerogatives is really calm, neutral mind. That's completely yeah. calm. So, you know, when the hints and the spiritual in the abilities are coming, they are tinted as less as possible as they can be tinted by your own ideas or perspective, fears, blockage, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. at the beginning, you're still usually not cleared completely. Uh, so there's loads of stuff coming on and sometimes hard to make sense out of it. So I was, kind of, I was definitely struggling with it, with it, like, okay, so what is me actually like creating stuff in my head and what is actually happening? And some of the stuff would later on get confirmed by, let's say, somebody else confirmed, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it was, or uh, somehow it would go confirmed, but that's not always the case. Like, you can't always confirm everything. Yeah. It's like, if you have some vision about Highland, the mainland Highland somewhere, like, it's hard to actually, like, oh, hey, you know, this this happened on this particular leaf in the middle of a Thailand. Uh, it's like, yeah. It's so sometimes the option is there sometimes it's not um so i i'm no, i really like this idea of totems having some sort of like a like a, some sort of like a safety net 
some sort of like a you know, confirmation, something to kind of rely on uh, yeah. for like extra help with the development. Because I realized that since you at this point either are doing cards or uh, you have some sort of like uh, or pendulum or astrology or some sort of like other form of uh, divination and lots of people already seeing stuff at this point, you might as well just use them. If you keep seeing stuff, yeah. Anyway, and just <laughs> my son is it. Uh, the other thing that I do think is important, and I probably say this because I know I'm more of a feeling based than a mind based, is like I do think if you are tapped into your feelings or you're quite an emotional person, your feeling body does tell you when something's not off, or like your feeling body can all, or even start to tell you if you're lying to yourself, or because you know, because it can go both ways. And I think it's being open to that as well. Like you might be given information which is not correct. Equally, you might be interpreting it in a way that's not correct. Like it can go both ways, right? And so like I also, have, like my mouth does this weird thing when I lie to myself and I can feel it. And my brother calls me out on it every single time. But it's actually really freaking useful, although fucking annoying. <laughs> but it's really useful because I will be like, oh shit. I am lying to myself, fuck. <laughs> or like, you know, so I think it's quite cool to, to have a number of different things that you are, so like one of mine will be visual and energy, like the energy totem. The other one will be within my body. So, you know, there's all these different things. And it's just like anything I'd say, the more resources that you have available, the more like, um, the better the ability to get the right compass point. And essentially, let's be honest, a place where psychic stuff is highly, elusive if you know what I mean even to people you know where we're seeing stuff all the time and hearing stuff all of the time so I just think it's really it's just basically good psychic hygiene I would say to have yeah, multiple yeah. different things to develop yeah. over time yeah always you you're absolutely right as always I 100% agree with you um even if you are trained you are still working with quite elusive energies it's subtle energies you know you, yeah. you will even if you are really developed it will never be like yeah exactly it's never going to be as tangible and as like as an actual physical thing or whatever yeah, it might yeah. be exactly yeah it's it's always like subtle energies but you just kind of get better with it yes for me was example what really helped was learn how to decoding dreams that's actually why one of the uh, products I actually offer is dream analysis because i think it's actually really vital like learning to the symbolism of the dreams because dream, that's subconscious and that's where all the yeah. psychic senses are. It's all our subconscious and unconscious and that connection in that divinity that goes through, through, through the conscious mind to the subconscious, unconscious, yeah. and the, to, the, to the divinity. So have you worked with your dreams at all? Yes. I mean, my dreams, I would say, are like <laughs> epic communicators. And like I find that my dreams, I don't know how this works for you, but I have dreams where they're distinctly my spirit guides talking to me. They're dreams where I'm distinctly out of body. They're dreams where I'm distinctly lucid dreaming. They're dreams where they're distinctly my subconscious telling me what's going on. They're dreams that are distinctly premonitions of the future. Or there are dreams that are distinctly me being aware of how somebody is actually feeling and thinking about me. So I feel like once again, they come into different categories. And then it's just a little bit of experience and playing with it that lets you know which is which. But I mean, I think dreams are epically important i mean well they are for me let's say agree. no i That's totally agree i totally agree i think that uh dreams can give you because in a dream the conscious sensor is just not there so yeah. it's just like obviously the dreams are always tinted by the things you've seen throughout the day yeah. and, but there is still like i would say it's one of the most direct ways of communication except for obviously divination methods like tarot and stuff like that uh, dreams yeah. i think it's really just your either higher self or the divine mind just can really talk to you yes. about the situation yeah. my dreams i would say they are very they are usually very calm but very symbolic so my yeah. my my usual dream would be like i'm walking through a city that's kind of like weird half deserted city during the sunset and yeah. then there's like weird things happening within that city I rarely see, like, people are not that common in my dreams. So I'm just like, I'm going somewhere and I see something and it symbolizes something. And so my dreams are usually really symbolic dreams happening, usually in some sort of like an urban city. That's so 
interesting. It's like a, it's like a, a the funny thing is that I, it's not just one city. It's like, I have like hundreds of cities, but sometimes I like dream about part of one city. And then 10 years later, or sometimes even 15 years later, I dream about the other part of the city. And actually in the later dream, I even like went to the same part of a city as I went 10 years ago. So the, the, the cities actually like, like puzzle pieces, like actually full, uh, like combined together throughout the years. And I have like, I have like a mountain village I keep coming to. And it's places I've never been to in my whole life. It's like a mountain village with like a mountain cabin taking you up to the hill. Uh, there's like a gold mine there on top of the hill. And, and uh, or I have like this more like a historical city that is like this big, totally modern city. Um, so yeah, my, my dreams are usually like happening within a city. And I think the city kind of represents my mind. I was gonna say, I think it's your mind, totally. And, um, uh, for example, a friend was telling me a dream and where, and that's actually, that's a good example where, um, she was walking in the house that was actually like, looked really like almost like a Casanova house. Very simple. It was like loads of like a sinful things in that house. Like they were, the house was deserted, but it was like, yeah. uh, you know, like a, a red velvet sofa and, and the room. Yes. Oh golden, <laughs> golden, golden mirrors. So it's just like, oh, this like a kind of sleazy stuff. And she actually remembered that somebody was stealing uh, candles in that place. Somebody was stealing like either candles or, and I'm like, in that dream, the symbol is that somebody is stealing a light source. You have yeah. this sinful place in which the light is being taken away. Yeah. And then we actually got to the, to the fact that basically she really felt like uh, she was doing something kind of weird or immoral in her life and was kind of dimming her light. Yeah, and yeah, just yeah. Kind of doing her vision and her intuition and her own inner energy and light. So this dream was like the symbolism of dreams can really, really speak to us and give us some really important yeah. situation uh, and information. And I know sometimes, and actually I was just talking to a friend about this today because she just had a dream. I don't know if you would find this, um, but once again, like being like a predominantly feeling emotionally based person, sometimes if I have a dream, particularly to do with certain people that are in my life, it can, you know, if something like not so good happens in the dream or whatever it might be, or even if I'm trying to say, give myself some healthy boundaries to somebody, but then they're suddenly in on the dream, it can really like affect me for a couple of days after in actual physical reality. And we were like, well, both me and my friend were like saying, the thing with dreams is, they just work on you consciously, subconsciously, unconsciously, your higher self. It goes throughout all your cells and DNA into your energy field. It happens pr pretty quickly on the whole, if you know what I mean, like in 3D reality time. Yet it's so potent that it can have these kind of lasting drip on effects. You know, like when you wake up from a dream, you might feel amazing. You feel great for a few days or you wake up from a bad dream and it kind of just lurks around you for a few days. So I think as humans, we don't even fully understand the concept of what is happening in dreams. Even being psychic, I can really say that. I don't know what you feel. I, totally, totally. I even actually have, I'm moving and wondering if you have the same experience. Sometimes what happens to me is that I wake up from a dream and I can't remember anything from the dream, like literally anything. But the feeling from the dream yeah. is just staying with me for the whole day. Yes, totally. It's weird because I don't remember the dream. I I don't under I don't know where this feeling is coming from. But it's like it's like oh, like I have this strong feeling. I just don't remember the dream, and I can feel the feeling working on me. Yes. I don't remember yeah. the dream. Oh, yeah. But, so it's uh, so uh, yeah, definitely. That's uh, the dreams. I, I would definitely recommend anybody who is doing spiritual development to get a dream journal. Uh, so it's how to decode the the um, the the symbols. For example, yes. water tends to be mind or consciousness or emotions. So muddied water usually means you are not good in you are not in a good emotional place, uh, or your mind something like that might feel cluttered. When the water is clear, beautiful, you can see all the way till the till the bottom of the let's say the lake or a pool. That usually means your mind is clear. For example, when I was young and I was a teenager and everything was just, my mind was a mess, 
I kept dreaming about shallow but mudded water that was filled with things that can hurt me like um cans and stuff like that and i would like walk through the water and my leg would got scratched and bloody because i was a teenager and my mind was just mass and when i started my spiritual development i started to dream about water it was completely clear but so deep i can't see the bottom oh wow <laughs> and, and that's like man this is like a this is like such in your face symbolism yes totally. like i'm like come on this is not even hard to go this is so like uh totally. in your face and that yeah your dreams can can i think dreams are absolutely amazing like they can I think so the healing i think dream time you know if i know i've said like gone to do my own healing in a shamanic session or even if i'm physically ill my dreams are always that bit more like premier i would say and i even just can feel sometimes you know like if you're rolling over in bed or something and you kind of quite loosen your consciousness i can literally feel that my body is healing itself or whatever it's like quite a mental feeling but i just know that it's really just dream time is um magical in many ways <laughs> definitely definitely I, I agree um so um one of the things that i actually also like was trying to, uh, was like having like here my list of the things you wanted to mention is that I think that uh, in lots of cases, um, lots of a lot of people from my experience are having some sort of psychic ability as a child, like they they see things as a child or they're clairvoyant as a child, and then they kind of shut it down, yeah. and then for many people it comes back or it doesn't come back. But I was actually realizing that loads of people I've noticed have to overcome this, like the shutting it down as a child, because lots of people, let's say, so uh, many, 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 many cases, uh, I was small and I was seeing weird stuff. Uh, it's, it freaked me out. I was seeing like a ghost or something really disgusting, or I had an imaginary friend. My friends, my, my parents told me I'm insane and I just need to stop doing that. So. How, how would you like say like if somebody like shuts it down as a child like what what, what would you recommend dealing with that well instantly the intuitive thing that i first got as soon as you were talking about that is this is where you work on your childhood anyway you work on your relationship with your mom or your primary caregiver that was female energy your primary male um, caretaker which was masculine energy also your experience of childhood on its own and definitely you look at having a relationship with your inner child I think that would be a huge part that would then obviously if you have then because then essentially if your inner child starts to feel safe your inner child was the one that first experienced these psychic abilities and therefore the safer your inner child feels not just with you but with the reality that you've now created I think the more ability there is for you to naturally start to open up those psychic senses again and then obviously going through other like limiting beliefs that might have occurred during childhood that were shut that's it down. Such, that's such a great point that's such a brilliant point you always have the best points. <laughs> You're always so nice to me. <laughs> that's, a, that's, like, that's, that's intelligence, such a great point. Like if somebody actually obviously like shut down their psychic abilities because let's say their parents said, oh, you know, you're crazy because you have imaginary panda friend, then most likely this is not the only thing that you shut down because of your parents. Yeah, totally. <laughs> most likely there's more <laughs> so so yeah, yeah so, so obviously like you need to look at that and, and just kind of as you're clearing that out obviously the the blockage will yeah. come out also with everything else that was happening around the time yeah that's 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 a, um such such a such like a great said such a great answer um also one of the things i think is really important to mention is grounding oh <laughs> Hell yes! <laughs> if only I'd have known about that sooner, I swear I wouldn't have been so chaotic for so freaking long. <laughs> yes, I think it's really important. <laughs> <laughs> it's important! Just look at me! Look at me! I mean, look at me! <laughs> Yeah, it, it is important. It's important because um, yeah, yeah. Now I think like 
because obviously it's a development and when you go so when you go this much to one side you have to go this much to the other side you have to balance it out and when you are expanding in subtle energies yeah. going out there which is basically you going out there in the air and almost literally and just kind of expanding your psychic senses then you also need to ground so you're not just going too far too quickly um, and also so you can integrate i swear like grounding and earthing helps the physical body and the physical mind integrate stuff do you know what i mean in, in like a really i don't know coherent way that works in 3d reality I think uh, for me, walking it first, like grounding exercises at home when I'm like sitting and I push my knees while sitting. So I push my knees towards the ground. So there's like a pressure on my knees that goes throughout my calf or my feet. And like I'm pushing them down. And so I can like really feel the pressure on the bottom of my feet. That's one of the things that helped me. I'm, usually, I'm still doing it after meditation. I should learn that um, technique from Edward. Uh, in London uh, when we went to, to some of his uh, meditation sessions and I'm doing it ever since just a That's brilliant, cool. brilliant uh, technique and uh, I remember uh, and another thing that always helps me with grounding is walking inside the nature uh, forests eh, even parks uh, but like some sort of like uh, just the nature because the nature is naturally quite well balanced uh, nature yeah uh so it, it really helps me when i like do meditations or some crazy development and just you know go for a walk in the forest and just yeah for some weird reason and maybe it's the emotional base me again i do find salt baths really grounding i really do it's like it, it's really good the vibration is really good i understand that yeah I think it, yeah, it doesn't have to be a forest. So for some people, it can be sound, it can be visuals, it can be whatever. I think it might be like, yeah, find what grounds you. And you know, the other one I have actually, which is mental, <laughs> washing the dishes and cleaning my flat was seriously freaking grounding for me. I don't know what it was. And I know that that is not like on a spiritual checklist, <laughs> but seriously, washing my dishes and cleaning my flat that makes me feel really grounded. <laughs> I, hey, I am, I, I'm not the one who throw the first stone because like for me, I, when I was in London, one of the most grounding stuff, I felt like ground me really well, was going in one of those absolutely horrendous and dirty one-star hygiene kebab stores and get like a, get like a, like a food like a plate of like greasy 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 bun found fries it's um i hope it was veggie burger but might as well be fried rice um, <laughs> <You never know. laughs> it was something maybe because those places were just so dirty and nasty very ground like yeah yeah i mean it's I mean, <laughs> And uh, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that my this method, this particular method of grounding, is not very sustainable. If you want to sustain your healthy, you know, environment in your stomach, and you know, not to have a constant well, there. <laughs> you know, obviously that's the other thing. I, I don't know if you feel this, but um, what I eat massively changes me. Totally. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Colors around everybody. If I'm eating really badly, I won't see a single color. Like just so many different things I can't even explain. Where totally. essentially what I'm putting in my mouth, and I hate it. It's really annoying because I want to be like, oh look, I just want to have fish and chips or something. Or it's the sugar. Something about sugar is a real problem for me. I don't know if it's because it does something weird to my nervous system, and I swear my nervous system is the thing that's like actually communicating with all the different psychic stuff around me so if i do stuff that takes my nervous system off my psychic insights and my psychic abilities are nowhere near on it also dreams they become so much clearer when i'm so much cleaner so i think that's also something that's quite grounding like what you're actually eating i think it, i think it's because like i think the more neutral and balanced you are yourself the easier it is to see everything around and interpret it in a better way i think food you know clean food makes your body more clean more neutral more working well more optimized yeah. um and i would say frankly people be always telling me that like ah eat clean eat clean i'll be like whatever 
and I was like, eh. but actually I never realized how much difference does it make until I start the eating cleaner yeah. and felt the difference. Like Me too. until you experience it, you would not believe it. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's huge. Uh, it's a huge thing anyway that I experience. And also I even realized if I'm going through a really stressful time period or I feel like I'm really pushing one of my limits, if I'm eating super clean, I am way more emotionally stable when usually I'm totally. totally. way more emotional all over the place. So like, I think, um, yeah, I just think it's a really good tool. Yeah, it's, like it's, it's one of the things that I think is really important, but people don't really think about when it talks about they are developing psychic senses. Uh, yeah, what well, they think about that hey, crystals. No, it, it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> we love a crystal. <laughs> and yeah, the crystals. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm changing my statement to have a crystals and eat clean. <laughs> Yeah. exclusive you can have it both you can have crystals and you can have the carrots yeah. but also you know one other thing as well just with the grounding um i did find activating and working with my earth star chakra so the 10th chakra which can sometimes look like a silver star below your feet or like a taurus field that for me was like epically helpful in grounding myself that sounds that was a wacky one, but that's one that's definitely helped me. Like, do you know what I mean? Not as practical as food, but still really helpful. <laughs> yeah, that sounds that sounds like a brilliant, brilliant idea. So, uh, well, uh, now I think was the time to actually how about asking the car? So we like talk about Ooh. forty minutes or so. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure more. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, what we think about like developing, but I was thinking, you know what? Since we are talking about spiritual psychic senses. We can as well as just ask the cards what the cards are saying. So I have my uh, Mystic Mondays and I have my uh, Spirit Animal Oracle, which I do have. This one is a Czech mutation, but it's fine. I will translate it. I love this one. I freaking yeah. love this one. This is freaking awesome. Um, this is one of the mo more precise Oracle decks. I I'm, I'm you know, I actually think, you know all of her decks, that Colette lady, I always recommend to anybody, if they're trying to tap into their psychic resources and they don't know what decks to get, get hers, because I don't know what you feel, but psychically, I just feel like she's done something, which just means they're highly succinct to work with people in this reality, and so it gives incredibly accurate results, and it's great for people that don't have confidence. This one, like, this one, this one is, was so manic, that when I was actually... Um, working on recycling my old shows for uh, my YouTube channel when I was like getting old shows and I would put like a new video with it and new pictures and just doll it all up and actually I pulled the cards it's like okay what should I what should I use like well how should I approach this work what should I do today with my YouTube channel the card that came up was like the card that says nothing comes in vain use everything that you have <laughs> And it was like I a, really love it when cards do that. And it was actually the card of a vulture, and the idea is like, look how the vulture eat everything on the carcass. That's what you should do now. And I'm like, thanks for calling my radio shows a freaking like a dead animal has been eaten by vulture. But okay, I got your message. Yeah. That's how insanely precise this thing is. So yeah, again, yeah. I have a Czech mutation. I will translate it for you, but this is how it looks. It's the Spirit Animal Oracle. This is, I actually have done a review of it on my website. Um, so I, I post the link down below to this to, to the review if you would like to like find out more about it. So it's great. I love those as well. I really like them. I like all her decks. And then I have my Mystic Mondays. Tarot. I like those. I love the colors. My, that's oh my like me, and that's my colors. Like, look, look at all the like the purples and the pinks. Yeah, that's, just, that's so nice. That's that's my colors. So okay, so who who will start? You can start. Just tell us what is the the decks. Yeah. Well, number one, I can't totally remember. I've got this one, which is like a, it's the reverse tarot. So, oh, the new visions tarot. So you know the original tarot. Another sort angle. Oh, and that's what I today. That I freaking love. You have always it's just yeah. You have always such a great decks. You have such a good like. <laughs> you just pick up like, I and mean, when I'm looking at decks, I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm not drawn by anything. And I like saw your stuff, and you always pick like this this best color madness oracle decks that I've ever seen. 
Well, this is what one. This one's cool. This one's something like the native. Ooh, I'm not sure. I can tell you, and then you can put a link to it. It's like a native something. That looks really cool. That was really cool. Okay, let, let's have a look. So I'm have, I'm pulling. So sorry, what's the question? What's the question? Okay, so what the divine providence is suggesting? What is the best way how to develop psychic uh, abilities, and also what is the eventual pitfalls? Ah, okay, great. Okay, it's cool. Okay, so and pitfalls. <laughs> Wow. Oh my God, this is so precise. Yet again, that's in freaking insane. <laughs> What's it saying? Well, this one, this first one is a flamingo, and it says relax in between or embrace the in between. So this card is about embracing the ambiguity of the ambiguity of the situation, like being okay with um, just not having a definite answers. Yeah. You're working with a subtle energy, so you won't have A, B, C, D. You, it's going to be more in between. It's going to be more subtle. So relaxing in between is find your own, accept that, accept that in between, uh, accept that. Um, I would say just you know just uh, adaptability or flexibility, the the kind of like unsaidness, the, the, yeah. the in between, the transcendental, embrace the transcendental and find peace with it. Uh, be yes. comfortable with things that are not. 100% clear, boxed, rational, physical, just kind of embrace uh, the things that are in between. And this one is dolphin. And the dolphin is about the, uh, it's that the truth is relative. From different perspectives, truth is going to have a different form. So, so both of those cards, I would say, are talking about you are not dealing with the physical world. You have to, you can't expect it to work or like feel like a physical world like a physical yeah. world it's going to be way more subtle so it's going to be way more relative depending from what perspective the person is looking at it's going to be more subtle it's going to be more transcendental so find your peace with it accept it and learn how to work within this more transcendental environment cool i love that and that's so true right totally totally so what you got then I'll just turn them over. I love turning them over. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to pull a few. So I've got, we've got two of wands and the queen of swords. This is for like, what, what do you need to do that's good? And also, star child and stargate of Orion. Don't know if you can see them. Oh yeah, those are gorgeous. <laughs> so let me just see, what am I feeling with this? So... So what I really feel with this is one of the positive things that you can do for enhancing your psychic abilities is in some ways it's like, um, cause I can see there's like a jester back behind here at the back and the queen of swords is very serious. I think the thing is, if you do want to get really good at this, you do have to take quite a serious approach and almost quite a linear or like, if, no, not linear. It's like you've got to have protocols for what you're doing and for how you're going to go about stuff. And also I think you need to understand boundaries and limits not so that in any way you um, don't push yourself further enough but just because if you're working in something that's psychic there are no boundaries it's complete everything and anything exists there so i think it's really important that you're very clear what you are trying to achieve and what you want to get out of that psychic space or psychic information and i think it's really important to have that insight before you start going in to expand certain things so that essentially in so so many ways you give it the respect that it deserves and that you also just um, appreciate just kind of like you appreciate that when you go into something that is so limitless you need to at least have the appreciation of that limitlessness 
and therefore as a human being and in this 3d reality you're going to have to have some practical approaches about how you will go into that space to retrieve information to bring it back and to practically apply it in this reality that's kind of what i'm getting with that but i'm also getting here with these star child and stargate of orion i just feel like um in all honesty, I think this is just going to happen for so many people, whether they want it or not, like within the coming next decade. I just think it's like part of the process. Totally so right. I actually think mm -hmm. we're just all here to support each other. You'll have other people, mates, that they'll start to have it or family members will. Or if you're alone at the moment, you'll soon start to attract other people that are on a similar pathway. And I think it's also just trusting that you are you're being supported and protected in this space. You know, so it's not like the little kid that maybe got told, well, why are you seeing that? You shouldn't be seeing that, that doesn't exist. Going into this new reality going forward and like in the future, particularly next year when all this energy changes from earth to air, like so many souls will be on this journey. So you're not alone, it is safe and you can do this basically. I have actually my cards, actually funnily enough, the tarot I pulled was actually very similar to what you just said because I had the star which I see like following the calling, following the intuition and the trust uh, towards yeah. towards the universe and the, and the process that's happening. Uh, then I had Knight of Swords. I see Knight of Swords as somebody who is quite serious about the whole situation and quite rational, cutting off what needs to be cut off, but seriously yeah. progressing forward towards the goal that was somehow uh, determined by the star. So like yeah. being the Knight of Swords, uh, seriously pursuing the star. Um, and then I had Eight of Pentacles. <laughs> yeah. That's funny because I'm going to be come back to this today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm going to come back to that. And the pitfall that's going to make, this is going to make you laugh. This is like a tarot jokes. Uh, the pitfalls <laughs> of... Um, pitfalls of uh, the whole development, I got a page or princess of what? Of pentacles. That means I read it as not actually starting the development. That's the, yeah. that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the pitfall. Not actually starting the new chapter, not actually going and doing it. So that's, that's, that's very rational. Uh, I was expecting something a bit more like obstacles. Now uh, the cards are very down to earth. Um, like yeah just the more biggest obstacle is actually if you don't do it it's like yeah yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> nothing's going to shift if you don't do it totally <laughs> why well, you're asking me such a stupid question it's <laughs> <laughs> when you don't do it <laughs> thanks <laughs> i love that <laughs> So actually, I think now I'm going to come back to this card because this card came up to something that you and me also came to. And that was what is, according to us, the surprising biggest hurdle um, in uh, when people are actually uh, like it's happening for them or they are like approaching when they're starting with spiritual development. And um, da -da -da -da, ready to be surprised. <laughs> Okay, me and Abigail thing, it's discipline. Yeah, 100%. 100%. That's exactly what this card, oh, I'm sorry. I keep stick, stick, stacking it in front of my laptop camera where I'm actually filming <laughs> over here. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. I'm just so used to just like, Okay, well, here. Uh, I'm sure I'm much you can like, see it with the yeah, that's cool. quite glossy. But it's Eight of Pentacles. And Eight of Pentacles, as you can see, is about repetitive work, uh, doing something again and and again, and uh, just see how it's improving, see how it works. So, with this card, this card is about repetitive work. This card is totally about discipline. And it came when we asked was advice for the development. So it seems like the advice really is having the discipline and yes. psychic skills are skills just like any other. Yeah, totally. I mean, totally. I just think it's like, I used to always say like going to the gym and building muscles, anybody can do it, right? 
but you know you're gonna have to do you can't just go once you're gonna have to do it you know a number of times and then if you want to get even better you're gonna have to like up your ante you're gonna have to you know there's all sorts of things you're gonna have to bring in nutrition and we've already even talked about that through psychic stuff i mean but the repetition if you want to be pimp <laughs> you're just gonna have to like just you've got to make it a lifestyle make it a lifestyle thing a lifestyle choice and then obviously yeah make yeah, things happen no, absolutely i absolutely agree it's 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 a skill like any other and it needs training and um just like going to gym you won't see results immediately but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist it's just like yeah. When you go to gym you don't really expect that you'll get really buff after going to gym twice but with the psychic development because it's all subtle and transcendental then you might kind of expect more and then nothing is happening so you might get discouraged but i think yeah it's it's it should be the same expectation like you need to work on it yeah. over a certain period of time to really really develop it and not getting discouraged when it doesn't work if you do it once exactly and, and also the other thing is no matter how amazing you are with your psychic stuff you will still get it wrong sometimes just because it's life just because you're pushing your boundaries you're pushing your borders you're going into a place that maybe although you've got loads of experience in this psychic bit you then put it in a slightly different context which you don't have quite the same kind of like I don't know feedback system but if you don't go into that space like what your card is saying you'll never grow it you'll never learn so i think it's really useful as well just to be be totally okay with getting it wrong and even if you're like 70 and have been doing it for 60 years so what if you get stuff wrong i mean life would be boring if you could constantly be like i totally know the mystery of life i know every single part of it so i think it's embracing that as that's, well that's it again such a great point because I feel like in a way, this is like, you know, how people like compare themselves, like, oh, I don't look like the, like the, like the women in the magazines. In a way, this is similar because like, oh my God, like I, I have some hints, but I'm not like this perfect psyche who can like see, uh, you know, the, the color of the underwear of uh, Kennedy when he was on his vacation. <laughs> and, and, like, it is just like, because you can't, you know, it's just, again, it's like unrealistic image that people have about psychics and then people are comparing themselves to i think to an extent some people it's like it's really it's like with the gym like some people will have it easier some people will build muscles faster than the others if this is the same some people will build psychic senses faster than the others but if you know if you go to the gym often enough then you're going to build the muscles as well you know, at the end of the story uh, the bottom line is everybody's having muscles yeah yeah totally but you might have to do it a slightly different way like you would need to lift weights in this order or you would yeah. do your psychic in this way or exactly. you would need to take those protein shakes at that time like and that's part of the experimentation about obviously playing with it and you know just one other thing that's just popping into my head and my guides are like say this it's really important apparently my guides say there is no such thing as a birth chart where somebody is psychic or the numerology that makes that person psychic we're You're all psychic there is not a thing that's like, oh, if you are an 11 and 11, you are psychic. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't see what it's, you're saying. It's really vague, but this, the sign says preach. You can't really see it because it's big, but I'm like, yeah, you can see it if I tilt it like this. Preach. <laughs> preach. Okay, I'm, going to, I'm going to, like, I'll try to. Please. It is true though, right? It's totally true. It's totally, it's totally true. Uh, and I just tagged it and you still can't see it. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need to develop my skills in sign making. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Needs discipline, really. Uh, <laughs> Trying it in many different situations, different lighting. I mean, like, it's all that stuff. Experiment. Find a way how you can actually manage to write and make a sign. Exactly. Yeah, no, totally. That's, that's, that's right. That's right. That, um, from, my, um, from my experience as well, um, I would say it's, it's really down to the person. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I've noticed people who, the only thing I think I notice is sometimes people who have a uh, good connection with the energies I would call lunar. Uh, yeah. So some sort that they tend to be more psychic, but like it's again, it's like exactly like the gym. They might have it easier to build that psychic muscle 
but if they don't do anything with it, then somebody who is having it harder but trains it more is going to be better. Yeah. Yeah, it's really like a gym. Yeah, it really is like going to gym. I definitely see see and that. Also, also, even like within the astrology, even if you look at somebody's birth chart, the thing is then they have their progress chart, which is obviously where their natal chart changes by one degree every year they're born. So you might start with the moon in a really great position like cancer for psychic skills or whatever. But obviously the progress moon moves around so many different things anyway, a lot quicker. But you can obviously, it shows how it will shift and it will change anyway. So even if what you see in your natal chart does not look psychic, it doesn't mean that say your progress chart isn't now a highly psychic chart or your solar return chart is it now a high psychic chart or even when you get together with somebody on a very intimate level their chart plus your chart coming together actually brings an energy which is highly psychic which you then develop off i mean there's all these ways that are just so <laughs> i mean i'm sure there's a thousand and one other ones so i mean just the point is we are all psychic right <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are all psychic we are all psychic and <laughs> And yeah, that would, that would be actually like a, a great closing to this, uh, to this talk. We are all psychic, just not all of us have the discipline to do so. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm kind of only partially joking. But uh, that, yeah, so um, well, I hope everybody that you enjoy our uh, talk uh, with um, Abby. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Also, let us know uh, how, what's your experience with uh, developing uh, psychic powers. If it's something that happened gradually over many years, or if you had similar experiences like us, when it actually kind of all happened within like a year or two, or if you have experience of like really struggling with it um, for a long time, uh, let us know what you did to develop your psychic senses, what, what, what worked for you and what didn't. Again, let us know in the comment section below. Also, let us know how you like this interview, like, like you like this talk. If you like us talking, we can do more talks like this together if you enjoy it. So <laughs> let us know. And I'll be looking forward to see you in some of my other videos and also all the links to Abby, Abby's channel and Abby's website and everything that Abby has is also going to be in the comment section below. So I'll be really looking forward to you and I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day.